Good morning, everyone. I'm Jason Pittman. I'm the pastor of the Sepulga Charge in Georgiana, Alabama. I'd like to welcome you to another Sunday service uh, here in my home out in Billingsley, Alabama. Um, I'm pastor over the churches of Jenkins Chapel, Bethel United Methodist Church, and Asbury United Methodist Church. And I'd like to say hello to all of my congregation uh, and wish you a happy Sunday and uh, many blessings. Praying for you all, love you all. With that being said, uh, we'll do the Apostles' Creed and recite it if you know it. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today's scripture is Judges 6, verses 11 through 16, and I'll be reading the New Living Translation. Um, I really appreciate this story. Uh, it's a good one for today's times. Uh, it's about Gideon and the 300 and uh, everything that they were going through back then, all the adversity, uh, all the challenges, and the need for God in these times. Starting with verse 11. Then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash of the clan of Abizar. Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Sir, Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go with the strength you have. And rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. But Lord Gideon replied, How can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least in my entire family. Lord said to him, I will be with you, and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of that scripture. Well, I'd like to start out with something a little bit humorous right now has absolutely nothing pertaining to this but uh anyway nowadays we all need a good laugh so i gonna tell you about a cab driver that reached the pearly gates and announced his presence to saint peter who looks him up in his big book upon reading the entry for the cabbie saint peter invites him to grab a silk robe and a golden staff and to proceed into heaven a preacher is next in line behind the cabbie and he's been watching these proceedings with great interest he also announces himself to St. Peter, and upon scanning the preacher's entry in the big book, St. Peter furrows his brow and says, Okay, we'll let you in, but take that cloth robe and wooden staff. The preacher is astonished and replies, But I'm a man of the cloth. You gave that cab driver a gold staff and a silk robe. Surely I rate higher than a cabbie. And St. Peter responded matter-of-factly, Here we are, interested in results in heaven. When you preached, people slept. When the cabbie drove his taxi, people prayed. Amen. So a little bit of backdrop of this. Um, basically, uh, God has handed over the Israelites to the Midianites because the uh, Israelites who had come out of Egypt had uh, fallen away from God. They forgot about them uh, and worshiping idols like Baal and statues and such. Uh, anything but God. So God was taken out of their lives and uh, they, they chose that. So everything was chaos at the time and the Midianites had overtaken them. Uh, sounds very similar to what we're going through in our nation today. Uh, many people in our government and others have taken God out of everything. And what do we have? We have chaos. So uh, basically in a sense, uh, the Israelites had no choice but to turn back to God, which is what God wants. He wants us to rely on him. Uh, and I fully believe that in today's time, we will do the same eventually, those who want to rely on God's strength, because that's what we need right now. We don't need violence. We don't need all this aggression and anger. 
Um, we don't need to turn away from God. We need to turn to God. And I pray that our nation does that. Uh, speaking about living the Christian life, it's, it's not always easy. A lot of times we're forced to deal with difficulties. We're forced to struggle through things. Uh, at times we want to just give up and feel defeated and uh, we lack the ability to overcome. We've all dealt with our moments, you know, feeling insecure. Um, and many times we even lack the faith to, to continue. The enemy, Satan himself, he loves this to happen. He, he doesn't want us to have faith. He wants us to give up. And while we're fearing faith, while we're fearing all these things going on in our lives, being uncertain, we're immobilized, uh, we're basically standing still. Uh, we're not accomplishing anything for Christ. But the Lord, he wants us to live victorious. He wants us to have victorious lives through him. Um, we can overcome with Christ. We're more than conquerors in him, you know, in overcoming all these trials. Uh, and the story of Gideon is one of those that's very inspiring. So back then, uh, they were living in desperate and difficult days for the people of God. They were living in the promised land that God had promised them, of course, but they had strayed away from the Lord and forsaken him. And in an act of divine chastisement, God had allowed the Midianites to overtake Israel and the people suffered very heavily up under them. And often in times of difficulty, uh, God will raise up one to lead his people out of bondage and into victory. Um, and we need that today. Uh, Gideon was an unlikely candidate, but God chose to use him and as well as he usually does. God loves to do that. He uh, likes to use weak and inadequate people to accomplish his will, and there's a purpose to that as well uh, because God can take uh, small things. He can take uh, portions of things and just make them so great. Uh, today, we also find ourselves uh, in desperate times, but God is looking for those who will stand up for him despite the difficulties of our day. Uh, this will require a strong faith, a sacrifice, but I believe it can be done. Gideon wouldn't have been chosen by any of his friends to lead this charge, but they hadn't called. God had. Is God calling you? We may think that we're unable but God can empower us to overcome. A lot of us have this inside thing going on with us and we're not sure where it's coming from. Uh, you know, and some of us are sitting still, we're missing our call. God is calling you. I promise you, he is calling you. He wants you to lead. You may not think you're worthy. Maybe you've done some things in your past or you've had some things done to you in your past. I promise you, you are forgiven. You are cleansed. God needs you right now. So let's talk about Gideon's life that he had to overcome things that resulted in a victory through God and also as an example for the things that we can go through today, overcoming our reluctance on things, just like I talked about. We want to consider his life. We, we talk about the fact that he lacked confidence. He was filled with all kinds of anxiety. Many of us are. But we have to learn to overcome our anxiety. We have to trust the Lord to do the impossible in our lives. What we consider impossible as human beings, God can make possible. So we want to say that there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was in Ophrah, that pertained to Joash, the Abizrite, and his son Gideon, who threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. He, he was just a basic person, you know, trying to make some bread, um, you know, to keep it from being stolen. And that day wheat was thrashed on the threshing floor and a place set aside near the field of harvest using ox to tread out the grain. And it's noble that Gideon is working in the harvest at all, but he's been overcome with fear. He isn't using all that is available to him to ensure the harvest. He's brought a small portion of the wheat to the wine press and working in secret, hidden from the Midianites in this time. And a lot of times that's the case for us um, as believers, as Christians today. We've abandoned the harvest. We're content with a little work around the church, but we're hidden from the world. We're not speaking up. We're not doing the things that matter, that, that are going to cause reactions, positive reactions for the Lord Jesus Christ in, in our lives and in others. And that's that gut feeling I'm telling you about. That's God talking to us. We need to stand up more as Christians. We need to do more as Christians. We can't just sit down and expect things to happen. So 
we have found as Christians that this is much easier to do. As long as the world isn't aware of what we're doing, we don't have to take a stand for the field. We've grown complacent with the little things that are being done, and we may see a little grain brought into the storehouse, but a lot of the harvest is still out in that field. There's a lot of people out there, a lot of Christians that, that need this. They need you. And it is more than likely a fact that you can be attacked in any which way may just be verbal. You may be told, you know, you're doing the wrong things. Here's what you need to do. Uh, maybe so much as how you're raising your kids or what you're even eating nowadays. Um, I mean, it's, it's broken down so much, it's ridiculous. So uh, you, you will face attack as a Christian, but God commands us to labor for the harvest. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm glad that um, I had somebody that went through the labor for my soul. Uh, I wouldn't be here right now today. Gideon had apprehension because he said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, then why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our father told of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of, hands of the Midianites. And upon hearing the call, Gideon begins to question whether it's a worthy task. He complains about the situation that Israel's facing. If God hadn't forsaken us, why has all this come upon us? Why hadn't God performed a mighty miracle in taking care of the Midianites? Gideon seems resigned to the fact that the suffering they face will never improve. Kind of sounds like today. It seems like we're never going to get through all this mess. This must be God's will for our lives is what Gideon is saying. Many of us feel that way today too. He's decided to accept things as they are. He's accepting the curse, not the blessing. That's what Satan wants us to believe. He would have us believe that God has abandoned us right now, not the case. He wants us to believe that our efforts and everything we do will make no difference. He wants us to sit still and do nothing. God is sovereign and he can do all things but he wants us to be workers in the harvest. We can't assume that things will never be any better. That's doing the devil's work right there. If you and I aren't willing to stand for the Lord and try to make a difference, who's going to do it? Who? I can tell you that it isn't God's will for men to die lost, and he relies on us. It's our job as Christians to go out there and get them in that harvest. They're ready. He wants nobody to perish, not one person, not one person on this earth, not one human being, not one human being with a soul. And that's our job, winning souls. Man, we have brought so much on ourselves, but that isn't what God wants. There is hope as long as we live in the day of grace. And Gideon, he had assumptions as well. He said unto him, O oh my Lord, Wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my father's house. Gideon begins to question the choice God had made. He starts to tell the Lord about his inability in regards to his heritage. He doesn't believe. He thinks he's nothing. Surely the Lord has made a mistake. He doesn't want me to become a leader. I'm sure many of us feel that way today, too. I felt that way at one time. I couldn't even speak in front of anybody. I couldn't even read one little scripture without burying my face in it, and nobody heard me. That's how I got my start. Who are we to question the authority of God? He knew all about Gideon. He knows us as well. He wasn't called because of who he was, and he wasn't expected to stand in his own ability, and God does not expect us to stand in our own ability. He wants us to rely on him, and this is human nature. It's okay to feel that way, but we've got to overcome it. We've got to have faith. And many times we feel, well, God, you can't be calling me. There's got to be a better person out there to do this task than me. But it's you. It is you. And a lot of times we miss God's blessing because we doubt that God can really use us. God can use you. We all have gifts. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be just simply giving somebody food or donating something to a good cause or helping somebody that is in need. It's very simple, and you don't have to brag about it. It could be just something so small that nobody else sees, but it'll make all the difference in the world because you're spreading God's love. 
Gideon looked at himself from a human perspective like we all do. He, he thought that he could only rest on his own ability. He had no idea what he was capable of accomplishing. God knew a lot more about Gideon than he had never seen before. He knew that Gideon had undiscovered courage. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. All Gideon could see was a heart filled with fear, but God saw a mighty man of valor. This courage wouldn't be found within himself, but it was given by the Lord. I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, adversity it has a way of bringing out the best in all of us. It's amazing what we can accomplish when we're put to the test, when our backs are against the wall. We can get strong again. And right now as Christians, our backs are against the wall. We are challenged right now, and God is saying, stand up. I am here. You can do more than you think you can do. I can do all things. Believe in me. Have faith. And I wonder what lies within us that's waiting to be discovered. Are we courageous? Yes, we are. We can be. We just have to submit God's will for our lives. I never even thought I would be doing what I'm doing today. I don't stand alone within my own strength, though, because many other people didn't believe I'd be here either. I've even been called fake. That's okay. God says I'm not a fake. Just do what I tell you to do. God could see more in me than I even could imagine years ago. But God's not going to ask you to stand without providing the strength and the wisdom that's needed within your heart. You may not even realize it's there, but God does because he's the one who put it there. Why don't we allow God to take his hand and remove the doubt to reveal what he's placed in our hearts? our strengths, our gifts. We have them, they're there. That's that feeling inside that I'm telling you about. God believed in Gideon's undeniable ability. The Lord looked upon him and he said, go in this thy might and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? Gideon may not have fully understood or come to rest entirely in the Lord, but he wasn't asked to take a stand in, against the Midianites in only his ability. Lord will never send us out to be devoured by our enemies. When we stand for the Lord, we stand in his strength, not our own. It may look like the enemy is going to overtake us soon. It feels that way, doesn't it? But I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, <laughs> he's, he's aware of what's going on. He's behind the scenes working hard right now. And here's what I love to say. God is in control Psalm 73, verse 26 says, My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. God won't lead you where his grace can't keep you. And when we realize that we're not standing in our own ability, but in the Lord's, we are well on our way to victory. Romans 8, 31, love it. If God be for us, who can be against us? If God has sent us, he's going to provide for us. I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, Gideon had unlimited resources. He didn't think he did, but he did. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Gideon was a humble man of meager means. He didn't have much in his own mind. He wasn't a man of military might or even military experience. He, he faced a host of valiant men who were seasoned in battle in the Midianites. They, may, they had the best weaponry. But guess what? Gideon had the Lord. That reminds me of David and Goliath a little bit. Maybe that'll be another sermon another day. God would provide the resources necessary to overcome the enemy, and he'll continue to do so today. He'll do that for you. You've got to have faith. There is a lot we can't handle on our own, but the battle isn't ours. It belongs to God. And that's what we've got to realize as well. We can't even begin to understand what the Lord is going to be able to provide. He delivered the Israelites in the face of certain death at the Red Sea. Y'all remember, he split that Red Sea right in half. They walked right through it, and he destroyed the enemy. He brought the victory through a little shepherd boy and five smooth stones. That'll be that other sermon. We'll have that one soon. The Christian has at his disposal all that God can provide. That's an amazing thing. So what else could we need? Listen to that little, that little noise, that little inkling 
of something that's right here in your heart. That's God speaking to you. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. God is talking to you. Let's talk about the victory of Gideon. A lot could be said about Gideon's fleece and seeking a sign, but in the end, he was obedient to the call of God. Are we being obedient to the call of God? If we are to remain strong in the battle and continue in the harvest, we have to learn the principles that Gideon realized. It took him a bit, but he realized God was in his corner. God was giving him everything he needed. And there's some definite steps that we have to practice to ensure the victory. Gideon was surrounded by those who had rejected the Lord and turned to worship Baal, including his father. He had to reestablish the altar and worship the Lord to be victorious. We have to reestablish the altar and worship the Lord if we are to be victorious. We can't just sit there. We're not going to gain victory if God doesn't have the preeminence in our lives. And many times we often try to secure the victory without them. We feel like we can just toe the line. Not the case. There's too much weight. In every situation we face, we have to seek the Lord. We have to worship the Lord. It would have been a futile effort for Gideon without submitting to the Lordship of God. If we're going to overcome today, we have to restore the altars in our lives. God has been overlooked and he's been neglected in our country way too long. It's time to remember who he is and our obligations to worship. Everybody talks about the good old days. Those good old days were when God existed in this country. Those good old days were when order was pretty much dominant because God was dominant, not chaos. We're never going to have a battle won without worship. Gideon established the altar, and he worshiped God before he advanced with the enemy. Worship has to come with no exceptions. The power of faith. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, and let all, uh, all the people go, and every man unto his place. The mission Gideon had been called to do was impossible with men. He started out with 32,000 men, and he reduced it to 300. It was an amazing thing. He had 32,000 men. He could have destroyed the Midianites. <clears throat> but God says, no, that's not happening. God says, cut them down. Let's knock down that number. So 22,000 of them were gone right off the bat, left them with 10. God said, that's still not enough men. Let's get rid of some more. He ended up with 300 men who drank like dogs. God knew that if Gideon had a large army, they would believe that they had overcome within themselves. That was the point here. These 300 men were no match for the Midianites. Judges 7, 12 said Gideon was going to have to rely on the Lord to defeat the enemy. It would re re rely on faith in God. A lot of times we face situations that are beyond our control. We tend to worry about the outcome, a lack of faith. It's going to hinder our progress in the work God has called us to perform. The work we're responsible for many times is overwhelming. We'll never accomplish it without the Lord's help. We have to develop a faith like Gideon had. We have to march confidently into battle. We have to trust the Lord to give us the victory. And without faith, we will accomplish very little. But through faith, we can accomplish a lot. Gideon was very reluctant to step out in faith and follow the Lord at first. His anxiety about an uncertain future, it crippled him with fear. Anxiety, uncertainty, fear, that's the devil's work. Those are his tools. Get rid of them. God has plenty for you. He has a lot of ammo. It's in the Bible. It is the Bible. Gideon couldn't even comprehend how he would provide victory. He chose to respond in faith. God never expected Gideon to defeat the enemy. He only wanted obedience. We must realize that God isn't asking us to fight our battles alone. He's asking us to trust him to bring the victory for us. You see, Gideon, with those 300 men, didn't defeat the enemy. And I think it's very interesting how God was able to do it for him because he gave them all horns, and they blew those horns so loud it confused the Midianites, and they turned on each other and destroyed each other. An amazing feat. God is great. Victory is coming, brothers and sisters.
Let us listen and have faith. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come before you. We're overwhelmed by the vastness of evil in this world right now, and it grows ever darker. We need your light to shine ever brighter. Help us to stand firm, finding our shield of faith high in order to extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. Let your word go forth with truth and justice so that you would triumph over the evil that is in this world today. Your power astounds and resounds, and we wait in anticipation for your victory. And now, Lord, we pray the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God bless you. I'll see y'all next week. I hope you have a blessed week. Listen, pray, do it all over again. Stay in the word. Have faith. God bless. <laughs>